Welcome to the OFX Podcast. I'm Dave Claxton. Along with me, as always, is the bequeefer of bot burpees, Bethany McChesney. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Bequeefer? Bequeef, bequeefer. Yet I, I looked it up to make sure I was using it in the correct way. And it is like to be to bequeef something like it usually means to leave something to somebody, but like it's to hand something out. So oh, you know, okay. I out, did. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can bequeath to me. So you were handing out bought burpees. Uh-huh. I so did. Yeah. So it's well, like... I kind of, I kind of begged people to take some. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been the beggar of bought burpees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I posted about the my charity idea for my friend, and um, then I had nightmares <laughs> after I posted it that I was gonna be doing like three thousand burpees. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> it was pretty close, wasn't it? How many was it, like 2,000? Yeah, 2,500 burpees. Yeah. Yeah, you, And you did get a lot of help. I did, yeah. So it really wasn't that bad in the end. I did 350 burpees, so much less than my nightmares. <laughs> yeah, like 10%. Yeah. 300, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's And you know what? That's good, though. Everybody helped out. That is really cool. Yeah, yeah. And my, like, it was for a very worthy cause. And, um, yeah, we just, we have such a, like, small towns are really interesting, too. Like, you can just, and my gym is, like, a a little, like, a little village within the small community. So, yeah, they they really stepped up to kind of help someone that was going through something really awful right now. So, it was, like, a really um, unexpected community building type activity, so small cult-like thing <laughs> cult-like. it is not called like <laughs> cult-like <laughs> bethany's like this little micro cult leader <laughs> <laughs> i think people show up on a sunday morning to do burpees <laughs> i provided yeah. coffee and candy see just like cult you're buying them I'm bribing them <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was cool. That was good. That was good that you stepped up to help out. And that was really cool. And I'm sure they really appreciate it. And, and it was really mm-hmm. needed. That's good. Mm-hmm. And it gave Ryan and I a chance to do burpees and count funny. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I didn't even know you were counting like a moron. I'm like, yeah. Behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, all sorts of different numbers and ways. And, mm-hmm. and who was the girl I was doing the tribute to? It's one, she was at two. I can't remember her name. She was at your... um. Oh, way back when I did my adventure race. Yes, yes. Or orienteering. Urban orienteering. That's what it was. Urban oh, orienteering. yeah. I don't even remember her name now. She, she just, she just showed up to do counting of lunges. And she was fantastic at it. Oh, wow. I Yeah. I, she, was biggest she was. She was everyone's biggest cheerleader. Yeah. Huh. I think she should have no-repped me a couple times, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this was before the time. Oh, you know what? Do you want to talk about no repping? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so we haven't done like... Yeah, I got my beer. Beer with Bethany episode. Yeah, my nighttime tea. <laughs> uh, I just We had a meditation class that I came from, so I'm like still a little bit kind of sleepy, but... <laughs> it's a meditation class. You just sit there and think? Well, she it's a guided meditation. So, so she tells you what to think about? Yeah. This is like marriage. <laughs> it's actually so good, though. <laughs> so, and it, she's a Reiki. Um, I don't know what you call them, but yeah. So we like did a guided meditation through your chakras and stuff. And yeah, it's it's actually quite amazing how fast like the 45 minutes go by. But you do kind of wake up, like not wake up. I might fall asleep a little bit, but I fall asleep very easily. Um, but you do kind of come out of it and it's you're kind of in a little bit of a haze. So well, I would be quite certain there's a fair number of people willing to pay whatever amount of dollars to come for a 45 minute nap. Oh, absolutely. And um, we have <laughs> like my gym is 99% moms. So some of them are like, well, I'll take my money so I can have an, an an hour uninterrupted and have a nap. So if you called it if you call it meditation with wine, I would bet you get double the amount of people. Oh, you think so? Oh yeah, just it, it, 
<laughs> red wine and meditating just just right there <laughs> yeah well i mean it's off season damn it <laughs> <laughs> true true yeah i think anything with wine and you might get more people but yeah all right mm. no reps so like i said we haven't done one of these in a while so back um a couple of weeks back hunter set the new world record for high rocks yep um, 53 and change, whatever it was, which is smoking fast on a smoking fast course, but it's a smoking fast time. Um, but many times, I'm going to say probably four times on the burpee broad jumps, which is a very much a, a strength for Hunter. He whips through those really fast. He was sent back mm-hmm. a couple of times. And I thought hats off to the judge, but really hats off to Mintra, who was the one and ran over and said, Hey, hey that's no good. Mm-hmm. And and they enforced it. And uh, I thought that was really cool. That was good to see. Because I don't think even Hunter was aware of this. And I think most of the time people are doing no reps are not aware of it. But he would go down, he'd put his hands in front of his feet. And then as he jumped his feet back, his hands would shoot forward. So therefore, not longer being in that 12 inch gap between where your feet are and where your hands are. And they were doing no reps. And I did notice they were even doing a better job in the no reps on the wall balls. So that was in Stockholm. So that was good judging. Uh, good. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we just need this, and whether people are aware of it or not, a lot of, uh, I mean, you're shooting for records right now, and obviously he was going for a record, so you kind of play with the lines a little bit about, and some of with the burpees, the the hole is very vague about where your hands have to two feet in front of your. Uh, your hands have to go in front of your feet placement. So, I mean, that's kind of a vague and it's kind of a judgment call. So, you know, you can try to push the line a little bit. So, yeah, and you're moving really fast and you're you're full of lactic. And so, yeah, we have to keep the the rules as they are. So I'm glad. Yeah, and the two main things you see people get on the burpees is that hand where they shoot their hands too far forward in front of feet. And then the other one you see people do, and sadly, in the same race, uh, and this is actually, I think our hunter complained about this, and maybe it was hunter fans that complained about this, but whatever, was that, well, there were other people doing other shit. And it's true, there were. I saw that too, where it was, and this is another one that is probably the other greatest um I don't want to call it cheat or whatever, but uh, really no repable offense in the burpees is usually when they do the step up. So they'll step up one hand or one foot and bring it to where their hands are, which is fine. That's totally cool. And then they'll step the other hand, the other foot, they'll step the other foot past yeah, where that foot is. And then they'd be going from there. So gaining like an extra six, eight inches each burpee, whatever it is. And that one should be no repped. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's getting called as much. There's, I've seen a lot of people do that one. And um, no, they need to crack down on that. But baby steps. Yeah. Happy for any improvement. That's good. That's good. Um, when someone's like, okay. A couple of times you see Hunter go out for races mostly. And this is mostly a thing that he does. But others do it as well. They say, we're going for the record. I'm going for the record. I'm going. For... Do you really need to announce this? Like, is, is, isn't it like every time you're going out, are you not really trying to do your best? Is it ever like, you're like, well, if the record's there, I'm going to back off because I'm not going for it today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's something that uh, we're just, we're in this phase of the sport, like High Rocks and DECA, it's the same, where like records are just being set so frequently. So, I mean... It's kind of funny. I mean, so when when Lanny and I first teamed up for our very first Decafit relay, we were like, I think we could get the record. Um, so, and it, I mean, people made a little bit of a thing of it, like we're going for the record. I mean, of course we are mm-hmm. because we want to see how fast we can go, and we felt like the record was within our capabilities. So. But again, every time you line up, especially at this phase in the sport, you're always kind of going for the record. But actually, the one time that I got a record, <laughs> it didn't even cross my mind. And That's because I think you guys were like, just like, she's worried about winning. <laughs> I just want to win. And then 
Yeah. And then we got a record. So I don't know. It's just, it's just so interesting at this phase in the sport because I mean, um, every time, I mean, Meg has broken her own record. So she, if she was just, I, I want to run a personal best, it is a world record. So we're just seeing the record broken so many times in sport, in our hybrid racing sports. So I don't know. I stating it ahead of time is, it's kind of funny, but I mean, at the same time, it just, it's just so it's broken so frequently. Do you have the Canadian women's record for the high rock sprint? Well, it's only happened once. So yes. <laughs> Actually, we don't know. Cause they had the one in Quebec too. So we have to look up <laughs> to see what the time was in Quebec. Oh, okay. <laughs> We'll have to see. We'll have to see. So you definitively have the Ontario women's record for the oh, high yes. rock sprint. Yes. As well as the, um, would you actually, you probably do it. This is actually probably almost legitimate. This one, this isn't quite as goofy. You probably have the DECA, the Canadian DECA record or fastest Canadian female DECA time. DECA fit? Yeah. Yes, I would. It might, might be the mile too. Yeah, probably. Yes, I would. Yeah, yeah. That's almost yeah. legitimate, so I don't want to mention that because that's like, yeah, that's almost a real thing. <laughs> but you can never take my record from me. I won the first ever Canadian DECA event. The de first DECA strong ever. Yeah. Yep. yeah, there you go. There you go with a 15. Did you, <laughs> did you get a golden ram? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I do have one. Yeah. yeah she Riley <laughs> Riley has one for winning at Horses Heads with a 2012. 20 minutes 12 seconds. Strong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's very proud. I didn't beat the men. No, she didn't beat the men, but she won the women's. Mm. It's mm. funny, you know, I think about it like so how long ago was that? Was that like a year and a half ago, two years, most. Year and a half. Year and a half ago, my that was my first deck of strong, and my time for that one was a fifteen fifty two, and now I'm at a thirteen seventeen. Mm -hmm. It's you can really jump up, you know. Uh, well, oh yeah, yeah. It's so new. Yeah, and just just I remember so many things. Even if I wasn't, uh, even if I wasn't the least bit fitter, just so many things that go better now that save so much time. So, oh, yeah. it's interesting. so don't get down on yourself if you don't have a great time going out the first time. It's going to get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quicker. like sometimes just minutes from your first to your second. Oh yeah, and even like even Rye, she's down from a twenty twelve to like a seventeen something. Mm -hmm. That's a big drop too. Oh, anyway, back to that high rock stuff. Um, and the record thing. So the reason I say do you have to announce the record is because then Hunter and Anas said in LA. Oh, should we go through like the it's been too long. I'm not going through the podiums for Stockholm. Yeah. yeah. Hunter set a record. Alex Ronkovic had a had a great race. Um Ronkovic. Meg set a record. Meg set a record. Um Linda as well. She's had a great season so far. Another third there. Lauren in second place mirror image of chicago and then michaela got her spot in the majors as well as um uh katie simonson no 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 um british british girl uh oh well, see now i'm gonna have to look real quick it'll take one second here that's not it where did it go it is do 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 oh no it's not kate davy it's Wow, I thought Kate Davy got in there. Oh well, my mistake. Oh, Anna will now. Oh, okay. Is that right? No, 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 that's not right. Sorry, Rebecca Mason. That's it. Wrong British girl. Oh, uh, okay. My bad, my bad. So yeah, so she got her spot in there. And then on the men, well heck, we might as well say that now because we're already down the rabbit hole. On the man, who else got in there? We got um, Bo Willis and Michael Sandbach. They both punched 
their ticket to qualify for all the majors. That course was insanely fast. So like if you look at even Meg's time, most of the time it was running. Almost everybody's running time who was in Chicago was two minutes faster. Two minutes? Yeah, two so minutes. what was it? Well, I mean... Was this... So was it that it had soft corners? That's what they say, yeah. They, they, soft corners, um, big, long straightaways it was a well later course no traffic on the course like when they ran it was really early in the morning which by the way great live stream uh good commentary good video uh cool little graphics like when they're on the rowers saying 300 meters 400 meters great um, stuff like that but for the first time ever watching a high rocks event i'm like there is zero atmosphere here like, there was <laughs> nobody it was vacant. It was like they were running in a, a time trial in an empty in an empty building. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, that's very different for High Rocks. Like, especially because just before that was the High Rocks UK one and they had to build a little stadium area in the wall balls so they could put enough people in to watch. And this thing was just I think it was just the time they ran it, right? They ran it and it was just void of people. It was empty. But that allowed for huge fast time. So I think fast course, some people say maybe the runs weren't long enough, but you can't say if you're not there. All we can say is that it was a very fast layout for running and uh, the time showed that. And yeah, so not and, and again, this is why I don't put a lot of stock in records for high rocks, especially because they're so different from yeah. one to one. And again, same with Deca Strong and Deca Mile. I don't put a lot of stock in those records either because so much is different in setup. Deca Fit, they're usually similar enough that a record is 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 a legit thing, I think. Oh yeah, like it's always it's always two laps. The, I mean, the only real difference would be surface of the floor. I mean, now the tank, um, yeah. or the layout of the farmers carry, but everything else is pretty similar. Yeah, that farmers carry uh, in Dallas, I thought that was going to be slower, but I actually put up a really quick time on that, and I thought that that was going to be a slower farmer carry. I was surprised. The only thing, it just, it was hard to pass someone in it, but oh. I don't think that the times were necessarily that much slower. No, no, it was, my time there was, I want to say considerably, but I mean, it's a farmer's carry. The damn thing moves really fast, but my time there was um, definitively faster than my time in Philly for the farmer's carry. Like, I think in Philly, I was like 36 seconds and in Dallas, I was 32 so, you know, that's four seconds off in a farmer's carry is a big shave. Yeah. Right? So I, and I, I just think it was a faster layout, which I didn't expect. I thought maybe with that weaving, it might be more, I don't know. But you're right. You couldn't pass anybody. Yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, so back to the. <laughs> do you declare when you're going for record? So <laughs> Hunter and Anas decided in LA they were going to take a shot at the relay record. I believe this is Hunter's second or third crack at this one. And this is the most I've talked about Hunter in ages. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hasn't been racing as much. No, no, no. So him and Anas said they were going to take a crack at it. And again, there was a post going for the record, going for the record, whatever. And um, they did fall shy. They didn't quite make it in LA. Um, I think they were like very 12, close though. 10 12 seconds, seconds or so. 10, 10 yeah. 12 seconds, something like that. Very close. Under 20 seconds. We'll put it that way. Mm. Right, for sure. Um, so they didn't quite make it. And um, you know, why? Who knows? They looked like they were hauling. We we're doing pretty good. I think Hunter even went unbroken on the wall balls at the end to try to push for it. Yeah. And um, so they came up a little short. Uh I think to me, though, the one thing it does show is just how fast Rich Ryan and Paleo were going when they set that record. Mm -hmm. And I like I'm like hats off to those guys because they they really put it out there. Yeah. And I mean, Hunter called Anas the fastest man in High Rocks. But I think collectively, though, like Rich and Paleo are two incredibly fast Runner, so and with the with the double stuff too they're moving the lighter weights so mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about the strength in the stations i think it's about your strategy 
and having two really good runners who are good at running compromise as well. So, and then having the right setup because I mean, yeah. 10 seconds, that could just be a rock zone thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could, it could. Um, I don't think either course, like I think it was Dallas where they set that one where Rich and, and Paleo set it and then mm -hmm. LA where yeah. Hunter and Oz went for it. I don't think either one was a particularly stellarly fast course, but I don't think either one was a super slow course either. I think they were probably fairly even in, mm -hmm. in, the, end, mm -hmm. in the end. Um, I, th I seem to remember, I think Dallas where they set the record might have been a little more congested. But maybe it was a faster course. Yeah. Well, right. based on the videos, they were they were swerving in and out of people and yeah. Mm -hmm. And and not to say Hunter's wrong because I think if you just had a one mile race, Anas may be the fastest man in High Rocks. You know. Well, like based on their stats from their personal best and when they were at their fastest. Mm -hmm. Sure. I don't yeah. know for sure. I yeah. don't know Cleo's like previous. I think Play was more of a distance guy, whereas Anas was like a miler because he had like a sub yeah. sub four minute mile. Yeah. Which decimates just about everybody else in Hyrox. Like I can't think of anyone else doing a sub four. I That's don't know. Everybody's yeah. like track history. <laughs> but again, like we're that, you're supposed to. That's your thing. Well, I mean, I don't know if anyone's proclaimed they were a sub four miler, but I mean Hyrox is just so different than running for four laps of a track yeah 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 it's it is and i mean it shows anyway it just, just was interesting to see that they um how, how fast rich and paleo did it and now that record might stand for who knows how long hmm. because now predominantly the doubles are going to be pro weights so is that true yeah 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 starting in the new year they're gonna Oh, so I thought that it said that for s some events they were going to have the option of doing it with the pro weights. Some may. I think it's more going to be like some events are going to have the option to do it with the open weights, but we'll we'll see. We'll look and see which way it goes. But um, either way, you have to figure more of the high end competitors are going to try for the pro weight ones, and that means Rich and Paleo's time is more than likely more secure now. And same with Meg and Michaela, Michaela, because people will be going for the heavier weights to set that record is, is, you know, you always want to do the hardest one. And yeah, so it could sit for a long time. Hmm. Interesting. Until, until High Rocks offers money to break it or something like that. <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah, are, is someone going to break the record that they set with harder weights? No, no, not with harder weights. They'll be slower. <laughs> there is record with harder weights, though. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be think... two separate records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think right now it's Colin Stiefer and Taylor. Yeah. I remember his last name. Or maybe that is his last name. But um, yeah. yeah, they have it for the men. And then it is Miriam. Miriam and. What's her name? She's got that that interesting running style. <laughs> I, I can't, don't know. I can't remember right now. But yeah, yeah. So those ones, I expect those ones to be broken. Mm -hmm. In time, anyway. So yeah, and then, uh, so you know, High Rocks LA. Massive Canadian content. Yeah, it was so exciting to watch. I, like, I've been into high rock races before, but this one, I was like, there's just Canadians everywhere. Like the men's race, especially with, I mean, we had Austin and Jesse and Isaac, and I was just so gunning for a full Canadian podium. And I mean, Isaac, obviously just being seven seconds off of making that happen, but is it in his first high rocks ever when most people kind of show up and blow up? I, it was spectacular <laughs> for him to come where he did. So, yeah, and he's not. It's not like he hasn't been busy lately. Like he's been doing a lot of stuff. So, mm. um, and then Adam the swim guy. I can't remember his real name. Real name at first, but he's that was Adam the swim guy. Instagram. He came seventh. So that was another Canadian right in there. Yeah. But what I didn't notice is did the four of them do a relay afterwards? Because they really should have. Did they? I don't know. I don't think they, they did, but they should. No. Oh. 
They really should have. Um, by the way, to uh, thank you f- to uh, Tara Jackson and Isaac Sanderson, and I guess Lauren and Jesse Bruce mm-hmm. for helping contribute to us actually getting to see all of it. Yeah. Because I guess it was um, Isaac live streamed on Lauren Griffith's phone. Oh, okay. And then Tara live streamed on Jesse Bruce's phone. Yeah. So it was great. And there was a lot of people actually on uh on the live feed during the races. Do you know what's funny though? Uh, you're right, there was a lot of people watching and on the li- and on the live feed and stuff. But you could tell it was a large Canadian audience because nobody said anything. <laughs> Everyone was very polite. Yeah. It seems when it's like uh, when it's on the regular high rocks one, there's all this American European back and forth. Mm-hmm. And um, then it was Canadian one. We're all like, "Yay! Well done, everyone. Good job. <laughs> Hope everybody can win." <laughs> yeah. But it was it was good. Um. So yeah, a great and the biggest thing too was not only for us was a lot of cool Canadian time. It was a kick ass race. Yeah. Like Jesse was pushing Austin at the end. There, it looked like I I, I think if there was like another twenty wall balls, I think Jesse would have passed him. Yeah, it was it was really tight. And I mean, the the guys were not <laughs> doing their 100 wall balls unbroken or anything. No, so no. it was just coming down to who was going to break last. And it was down to like seven wall balls and the difference between first. And I mean, and they're both such great guys. It's not like you're cheering for one over the other. But it's like, you know, again, if if Austin took one more break, Jesse might have caught them and it was that close. So it was just, it was super exciting. And, but, and even the same with Isaac mm-hmm. and um, who, Grant, what was the, our third place finisher? Grady Jackson. Great. Yeah. Great. Good for Grady too, man. He did a great job. Yeah. And he took it out hot from the beginning. So I thought after the burpees, he was cooked. I thought he was done mm-hmm. because they went into the burpees. It was Austin. It was Grady. Right. And then all of a sudden, everybody caught up to Grady. VJ, Isaac, Jesse all caught Grady. And it looked like he was just, just dying. And somehow he rallied and came back. And I mean, good for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And I mean, when you look at also, Isaac's performance being his first one. I I know Isaac only did a hundred wall balls for the first time in a single workout on the Saturday at Deca Worlds, which was um two weeks before this first high rock. So when you talk about room for improvement, um Isaac definitely has that. So So who has more upside or a higher ceiling, we'll say? Isaac. Yeah, we'll go with the three Canadians first, and then I'm going to throw one more into Isaac, Jesse, Austin, who has a higher ceiling, and then I'm going to throw Rylan in there too. Yeah, higher ceiling. Oh, well, this is so hard. Like they, like one of them would have to actually focus on it. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, totally. So you'd have to see the seal. That's what I mean to see the seal. That's why it's a bit of a guess thing. But I'm going to say okay. This is no offense because we all love him and he's absolutely amazing. But Jesse is in his 40s and he's super fit. Jesse is um, a full 20 years older than Isaac. That's right. So I'm I'm sorry, Jess, but I'm going to say <laughs> probably not Jesse. Can he go faster? Yes. I think Jesse has the ability to break 60. But if he focused on it. Yes. But uh-huh. I'm going to say of those guys, he does not have the highest ceiling. Um, Isaac with the he's least. He's also the smallest of the four. Do you think he's smaller than Isaac? Jesse's a pretty thick dude. Like, I don't think Jesse gets enough credit for his how how thick a dude he is. You know, he's a strong guy. He's, not, he's the shortest. Mm. But I don't know. Anyway, um. Isaac I should ceiling. never discount the smallest of them, actually. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. That's right. 
just like us in the relay, we were the smallest team in there by far. <laughs> yeah. Really, you're like, I'm the smallest woman here. And I look around and there's like 300 pound giants around me. I'm like, yeah, I know how you feel. <laughs> in between bubbles and that other guy that ran you over. and <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even see me there. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but um, Austin has the greatest aptitude for power of that group just sheer strength his like him him, his lunges are unbelievable he just flies through the lunges Mm. right now the wall balls are a supreme weakness for him so he has so much room to improve one on his i think his running could be faster because he's never really been the super fastest runner Mm -hmm. and his wall balls compared to some of his other zones are just not up to snuff so i think he's got a lot of room for improvement um and then when you throw Rylan in, I mean, how much better can Rylan really get? Like he's already so good. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, Isaac is just so new here mm-hmm. in the space. Like you know, Isaac just started running a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he play pickleball or no ultimate Frisbee? Oh, uh, was it ultimate Frisbee? Or, it ultimate or, Frisbee. Or, oh, okay. I was like, dodgeball or some one of those super fringe things <laughs> ultimate frisbee coming yeah. from a more niche sport than ocr <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean the, there's running involved in that too but no. uh yeah i just think isaac is ha- definitely with uh age being on his side and just being still at the level he's at and just kind of starting into this world i think he probably has a high ceiling well of those ones, he he could have the highest ceiling, but I still think that Rylan will win world championships this year. Bold prediction right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's just... Okay. If he focuses a bit on it. Right, right. Nice. would be nice. If he focused a little mm-hmm. bit on it. But do you think he... I don't even know how much he cares about high rocks. Well, and I mean, he's obviously willing to give it up also. Yeah, yeah. Like, he he pretty much threw it out there with the with the steroid testing, right? Like, mm-hmm. by the way, do you, have you seen, have you seen yeah. any random testing yet? Not yet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> for sure sooner than later. <laughs> All right. Um. So, yeah, that was an amazing race. And we would be remiss to say Lauren Griffith. Absolute animal. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, that's another one too. And I actually wrote that down here. Where is it? Where is it? I wrote it. Chris Roglowski looking like she is rounding yeah. into some of the best hybrid shape Chris has ever been in. Mm-hmm. Like she put on a great race there and just she, even, even at DECA where we were there and it's like she came out of the lunges dead last in every race. Mm-hmm. and then came fifth like every like just worked her way back into it it's like she deliberately put herself down and then crawled back in just counting on her fitness and then at the high rocks there in LA she looked so solid mm-hmm. and I think that's a that's the fastest time Chris has raced yeah yeah I think the it was a good hour for her yeah yeah 104 13 so if you had put her in that Stockholm course she would have been a 102 mm-hmm. like that she's she's looking very good rounding into form and i think she will end up at worlds and she's gonna be a podium threat which i did not feel that way about chris last year yeah i mean it just with chris it kind of depends on how much she spreads herself out into the ultra world and it seems like this year she's done a lot less ultra stuff um so i mean that might be helping her speed a little bit too so yeah, well, she looks she, like I said, I was I was impressed. Always her running is good, but her strength looked better than usual this year. And then like seeing her come off the rower faster than some of the other women when I thought she mm-hmm. would actually lose time there and things like that. So I was just really impressed by it. Um yeah, so look out for Chris. She's I think she's and, I think and Maria it was probably my most exciting female performance though. 
of all of them. Like, she PR'd again, again. a massive PR. She really put herself out there. And I mean, that's a big travel also for someone from Ontario to go to LA. And um, yeah, she's just, for someone who, again, High Rocks has been her 100% all in focus. And uh, she's, she's been traveling to kind of get herself like really solid times in high rocks. And this was, you know, she kind of had a bit of an upset before, but this one really showed that she's been um, like, she's all in and it was just a really solid performance for her. And she was right there with Chris the whole time. And um, yeah. What I, she... what I love about the way Maria races is she puts herself in it. Like she puts herself in it early and she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to be in it until I, until I'm not. And then I'm going to keep trying that until eventually I'm in it all the way and I win it. And I, I love that. It reminds me of the way like Ryan Kempson used to do OCR. It's like, yep, I might go out and blow up this time, but the next time I'm going to go a little bit further and a little bit further until I'm the guy in the front the whole way. And mm. I just I like that. She puts herself in it. She's not afraid to get in the fight. She's not afraid to compete head to head. I love watching her do it. It's she's she's a fantastic athlete and just a great person yeah. to watch. Yeah, and, and then Katie Simmons and our other Canadian was right there, not that far behind. So no, and she was big time under the weather too. She was not oh, feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she she was definitely under the weather. I had a little chat with her, and she's just like, yeah. She says, hopefully the next time when I'm 100, percent maybe I can do a little better. I'm like, mm -hmm. you weren't 100. <laughs> percent <laughs> Pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, the two. Very promising. Very good. And then another one that did not get as much attention is Mike Fetchik and Jay West winning the doubles. Mm -hmm. Which, and this is like the first time I kind of really seen Jay West in it. In in Like, I mean, I know Jay from OCR here in, in Canada and stuff. But the first time I've really seen him on the scene, I know he was supposed to be there for the High Rock Sprint, but had to pull out due to injury or illness or whatever. And to see him go down there with Mike and, and, and then get a win. That's really cool. I like seeing that. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. Good guys. Lots of, lots of Canadians. Why did we have so many Canadians in LA? I have no idea. Chicago, New York, much closer. Well, they're just running away from the bad weather here. <laughs> Not so bad right now. It's been really good. Don't jinx it. Mind you, I think it's freezing rain out tonight. Uh, yes, it is here. Yeah, yeah. My my daughter came back from work. She said there's a little sign outside the store, and she had to like get it out of the ice, <laughs> chip away <laughs> at it to get it out of the ice. But it's still it's still better than last. Last Christmas was the worst drive of my life. And remember when we went to Worlds last year? That was what November. Uh yeah, end of and November. That was the Buffalo snowstorm from hell. Mm -hmm. Now we're still. Good. Let's just keep it going. No jinxing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, should we talk about Spartan Worlds? Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch it? Did you see it? Well, not really. Like I watched, I just kind of watched um, highlights. Okay. So the first question I'll ask you then is, because you don't have to have watched it for this one. Does it count as a real world championship? So VJ Jones goes out, wins the 3K. Does that count as a real Spartan world championship? So you're you're asking me because you have a feeling like maybe it's not because... I have heard, I, 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 I hear rumblings and I'm, I'm not talking about what you're going to say, but I hear rumblings online and stuff and, and things where because it's not your beast distance through the mountains at elevation trudging through frozen water that it's not the same and because it was a 3k it's not the same so in your mind where do you sit well so i mean this year spartan was focusing on the 3k so this was the culmination um so yes it was a world championship i, I mean there was just there were so many of the best OCR racers missing. So in that sense, was it a world championship? But you could also kind of argue the same thing with Decker Worlds and some big names missing because with Sweden being the same weekend, um, 
so Spartan called it a world championship. So yes, it was a world championship. I actually am in full. Yes, it was a world championship. It was open to everybody. It had a huge payout. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, it was, you had some amazing racers there. Mm -hmm. And although there are a lot of Europeans that maybe people over here in North America don't hear a lot, they are awesome racers. Like yeah. they are not second class racers. They are right up there. Mm -hmm. So VJ winning that was legit. And hats off to him. Congratulations. I hope he gets paid quickly. <laughs> period. Gets period. paid, period. <laughs> yes. Because it was a good race. And again, um, video coverage. Fantastic. Like, like mm -hmm. good reception. A little too much in the drone. Maybe could have used some people, a little, uh, some better shots down low. But, but clear and good. And, um, and, and commentary that put me to freaking sleep. <laughs> Yeah, Spartan, please. And they actually did this in the Beast. But do this before, before you start the race. Just bring Jack Bauer. <laughs> bring Jack. Let him color commentate so he can do his stats. He knows who everybody is. They didn't even know who the people were. They're like, oh, we don't know who that is leading. We don't know who that is. Uh... They called Jack during the Beast because he was texting them, trying to help them. Oh, and they wow. called Jack and Jack's like, yeah, this is so-and-so. And they do this and they do that. I'm like, oh, God. Like, one, yes, thank God for Jack to straighten, straighten it out. Just pay the man. Bring yeah. him over. Let him do that. Give him someone to talk with. I don't care who it is. Someone that can just do a little play-by-play -play and feed questions to Jack. That's all. Yeah. There's lots of options. Just Well, and again, like you're saying, this is a world championship. Mm -hmm. so like these are the kind of things where it's all part of the professionalism of the sport like mm -hmm. have a good coverage with people who know the athletes it's just yeah it's a shame because again to help the sport grow you have to have the media mm -hmm. you do and i mean this is like look at like i just said with stockholm High Rocks clearly put the money and they had cameras on booms. They had golf carts driving around beside people. They had multi multiple still cameras. It looked fantastic. They had graphics. And Spartan, you missed the start of the race because you were watching a dance. Really? I'm serious. <laughs> It's like five minutes of watching this kind of cultural dance. Great, cool culture. Whoops, we missed the start of the race. <laughs> oh, Come no. on, man. Like, oh, was, no. And I love, I love watching Spartan Racing. I love watching the three kid. That's exciting stuff. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm the fan. I'm the guy. I'm easy to rope in. I'm already sold. Was it a belly dancer? No, 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 no. They were more, um, uh, men in the full white outfit banging. Oh, dogs. okay. No, no, it was it was you know it was a cultural thing, right? That was cool, great, but it was like on for five minutes, and seriously, they did miss the start of a race. Oh dear! But it didn't matter because they didn't know who was in it anyway. <laughs> but it was just like so frustrating, and like so it was Watson and um and Hammond. Hammond is a great guy great course designer and i love when he's out there rabbiting and they go to him and he gives like little hits and updates and 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 that, oh, he's that's what he's great at he's awesome at that and he wasn't bad behind the booth but you could just tell like he needs to be out there that's what he is he's an out there guy right yeah. and watson's just a tool i don't know I don't know what to say about that guy. He's just, he's just Watson. Seem, he just seems to be there for Watson. And he's like, keeps telling the producer, Oh, get out of my ear. Get out of my ear. I'm like, he's telling you what to do. <laughs> yeah. He's doing his job. Mm -hmm. Like when, when we did DECA there, I got, I got Jason saying, do this, do this, do this. And that's his job. That's he's guiding. He's helping. Yeah. Yeah. Try to make it better. Yeah, you gotta let them do their job. And you do your anyway, whatever. So that part was disappointing. But the race, the race was freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. And like um, I think it was Pavel Hardina at the end, just came out of nowhere and gave this massive push to VJ and just really made him earn it at the end of it. Um mm -hmm. the gun thing at the end still 
It's so hard to watch from a spectator standpoint because you have no idea. Are they missing? Are they hitting? And then all of a sudden they just run away and you're like, oh, that's cool. They must have hit it. That might be the biggest issue. Do you yeah. think that if if there was like a big light came on every time they hit it, that you go, oh, one hit there, one hit there. One, do you think that would help? I don't even no, I don't think so. Like it, there's something about with the spear, you see it and you see if they missed or they didn't. Um, no, I just I think the whole shooting thing is just it's such a mess. So we said it when it first came out. That was a year ago that the guns would suck. And it's a year later and, and, and the guns still suck. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that I've heard, like I haven't done any races where you have them, but um, is that because so you're seeing a laser spot and when it's sunny out, you can't see that anyway. So even when you're in the race, yeah. you don't even know if you hit it or you didn't. Or if you're five feet wide or if you're to the left or the right or up or down or where you are. Yeah. 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 It, it's 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 a miss, literally. Yeah. And then when you talk about the spear throw. Then on the 15K, spear throw was huge. Because, mm -hmm. um, oh my God, I was gapping the, the gentleman's name who was leading and ultimately came second. Um, I'm sorry, we'll figure it out. It'll come to me after. But he was leading, good lead, missed the spear throw. And then Atkins came in maybe say 40 seconds later, 60 seconds later and hit his. And that was what got Atkins the win, which normally the spear has caught because in the past cost Atkins. So it's been a bit of a different one to go around, but again, a great finish. And it was exciting. You know, it looked like, it looked like all he's got to do is hit the spear throw and it's his world yeah. championship and no dice. I hate that a race comes down to this. Hmm. I hate it. Like just, it's a, I don't, it's a race and then it comes down to, and it's not even necessarily, I mean, the women's race where Lindsay just went for the wrong spear and there wasn't um, a spear attached to the rope and that was the race. It's just, it should not come down to a spear throw and having the spear throw right before the finish line is basically saying we want this to come down to the spear throw. And I just, I don't like it at all. So I will agree with you. However, I'll still take it over the gun. Yes, I agree. Yeah, but it yeah. is, I would have loved to have seen, like you think about, okay, great finishes. Lindsay and Nicole at OCRWC coming through that last rig together. Mm -hmm. And what a great finish that was and how that could have been spoiled if there was a spear right after it. And then one misses and one hits. Yeah. And 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 or uh, even worse though, one grabs a spear where the rope's not attached. Like it's so quality control on Spartan's side. Sandbags. It's a world, yeah, and that too. Yeah. So what was it like to have no spear attached to the rope is bad. And the other thing I didn't like too about the spear thing, and I don't know why this is, but when I ran into this at Blue Mountain as well, first wave through. You're supposed to have the spears stuck in the targets so that the first people there have to pull it out just like everybody else. Yeah. So that it's not an advantage. And then when I was at blue, they're all on the ground. And I'm like, well, put those in the targets. And the guy's like, oh, they told me to put them on the ground for the first wave. I'm like, that makes no sense. All that does is give the person in front an advantage. Gregory Basilico. Mm. Thank you. Sorry, Gregory. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so he they should be in there and they weren't and then you would have noticed that there was no spear on the end of the rope for Lindsay right yeah so so that's the spear then quality control sandbags yes Barton don't buy your sandbags in bulk from Costco I don't know where they got them but these were the cheapest ass shit I ever saw they they are maybe bought on Amazon in bulk I don't know but they were cheap crap sandbags and then they had the first two women carry the men's. How many things went wrong on that sandbag carry? Do you think? Like I can count many oh. things that went wrong. Yeah, and then the, um, I think two of the women their sandbags just lost all the sand. 
Yeah, yeah. That and then Esther, Esther's was dumping out, and and a lot of people were like, "Oh, she's dumping it out." No, I the way I saw it, Esther was trying to keep it in. Yeah, that's the way I saw it too, actually. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, the thing that got me about it was obviously basics of Spartan racing: men's weights, women's weights. First two women. Whoop! We screwed it up already. Like, <clears throat> so that was bad. And then they're like, and they even did say this on the on the broadcast. Oh, there's so much sand dumping out of those bags. That's actually supposed to be. She's supposed to redo the thing then because her bag's no good. So of course that didn't happen. Or she's supposed to stop and refill it. Which, in fairness, yeah. that is the one spot where you had enough sand you could stop and refill it <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, just anywhere. Just kind of drag it along with you. But the other thing I saw too, and if you read the rules, like so many people dragging the sandbags. Hopping them forward, walking forward, hopping them forward, walking forward. All these things are against the rules in the Spartan rule book. And they just keep trucking, keep trucking. And then Well, I think I'm assuming it's because they realized how how hard the sandbag carry was going up the dunes carrying 150 pounds. Nobody test it. I don't think that they do. They didn't. And that's the issue. And then even when I, when I saw, I can't remember whose bucket it was, up on the shoulder, just dumping sand at the back of the bucket. <laughs> I don't even think he knew. Because <laughs> it's behind him. It's just dumping it's out. He's trudging getting through. Getting remarkably lighter as I go. Oh, I'm feeling like I'm getting my groove going. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there was a, a few misses on that one, but some great racing, some really good racing. Yeah, And, it, you know, it looked cool. The course looked great. And there was a lot of good things. It's just, it's the devil's in the details, boys. I know. So, yeah. it, I mean, I'm one, I'm glad they at least had a broadcast. Yeah. And maybe we should have done, or someone should have done one of those watch alongs and then we wouldn't have had to deal with the commentary. And again, sorry, Hammond, it's not really you. You, you you do what you do. It's it's that other guy. Mm-hmm. Not to point fingers, but yeah, him. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, sounds like we're complaining, or I'm complaining a lot. But this, I guess, that's what I do. Something else I wanted to point out about my complaining, because uh, when I was watching uh, Hunter and Anos go for the record, and we're going backwards here, um, Anos's lunges were not good they were not full extension he wasn't coming all the way up all that stuff and that's cool judge never called him on it and you know of course i put in hey those lunges aren't up to snuff and you know it's like oh don't be a hater da, 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 da. these are within the rules and i'm like no they're not and then some people actually jump to my defense and say actually they're not within it and here are the rules and blah, 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 blah. all that stuff when i say someone's not doing a rep properly I'm not saying they're a bad person. I actually like Anas. I think he's a very cool guy. Yeah. I've talked to him. Mm-hmm. I think he's great. I think he's good for the sport. I think he's got super potential. And uh, I have nothing bad to say about Anas other than those lunges were bad reps. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't know because the judge isn't calling it. Yeah. So if anything, I'm saying something about the judge needing to be doing. And that's what I'm saying. So, yes, when I say someone's doing bad reps, it's not about them. It's not that they're a bad person. It's that I'm trying to point things out to help make things better because if we don't point these things out they don't get better and a la deca reverse lunges yeah how come i don't point out bad reps on them because everybody's doing bad reps on them it's much easier to point out the good reps chris rogolowski jack bauer they are doing the good reps all the rest of us know <laughs> and that's why they're always the last ones out of the lunges because <laughs> they are doing proper reps and it's just mm. those two that's it mm. Everybody else, we all cheat. <laughs> well, maybe. Hey, you, know what I mean. What's that? you know what I mean, though. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. And hopefully there'll be some changes there. But I'm just, I'm just using that as an example that, yeah, pointing out the reps is not saying anything bad about the person. Mm-hmm. It is trying to make the sport better. So that's my purpose in that. Um, okay. Do you want to talk at all about Hunter's thing today? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. <laughs> I do a little bit. I do a little bit. I don't know why. 
Okay. Are like we're gonna talk about the question. Yes, let's talk about the question and not the stupidity. <laughs> yeah, not like the the 40 minutes of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll put it out there. Um, so, uh, and I'll just say how this all got started. Uh, Matt B. Davis, Harvard Fitness Media, posted this thing where kind of Hunter went off on uh, this. He was on the Savan podcast, which is a CrossFit podcast, and um, they had a, actually it was a live show. They had a caller call in saying, essentially, um, CrossFit yay, high rocks boo, um, and Hunter went off on him in Hunter's fashion, and. Mm -hmm. So that a lot of name calling yeah. and yeah yeah uh yeah a little bit of like um some like grade school mm -hmm. pointing yeah anyways yeah as to be expected so check it out on Matt's post yeah. and you'll see and and as a, a bit of a tip that's about as good as it gets don't bother listening to the rest of the podcast yeah it's just you know I mean if you're into that stuff cool great but if Make you're just sure looking, kids around, please. Yeah, if you're looking for intelligent debate and discussion, don't go there. If you're looking for some cool name calling and 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 Monchismo, sure, give that a shot. Yeah. Um, the Savon podcast, not my cup of tea. Anyway, but it does raise the question. Two good questions were raised there. One, yeah, let's we'll start with this one. Without CrossFit, would there be a high rocks? So again, this is to me, I it, it was a question where I was like, one, why does it really matter? Mm -hmm. Except that, you know, people uh, of the CrossFit world want to kind of like bang their chest and be like, you know, you, you wouldn't exist if we didn't. Um, but again, like there's a lot of sports that are like that. So why, why does it really matter? I mean, we've all kind of progressed from something originally, um, you know, when it comes down, like when you, everything comes back to the origin of something started somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so what does it matter? Like it's, we're still looking at the progression of sport and hybrid racing is very, very new. And did it come from CrossFit? I don't know. It's a race. CrossFit, as it is not necessarily like a singular yes. race, it's a type of training style. So then a races were created that included movements that they do in CrossFit. Could it have been, did it have had its recent roots in CrossFit? Not necessarily. And I think it, it the the point that I found kind of funny was um, someone came at Hunter saying, well, the uh, the finish of High Rocks is wall vault. How would High <clears throat> Rocks have finished if it wasn't for CrossFit? <laughs> and, it, and his point, which made me laugh, was oh, has nobody ever squatted down and put an implement over their head before CrossFit existed? Like, which again, I was like, it's right. Like high rocks could have been created if high if yes. CrossFit never happened. Like if it wasn't a thing. Like it's just I don't know. It's such a silly debate. All right. So here's the long and the short of it. CrossFit, and you you kind of hit on it. CrossFit is a training a train a training methodology, right? Yeah. And that's what it is. It's a training methodology. Um, but it's circuit training essentially combined with heavy lifting. Yeah. It's it's just a version of circuit. Circuit training has been around forever. And it's not even entirely defined movements because CrossFit no. is always evolving itself as well. Would like CrossFit exist are without... Adding to CrossFit methodology all the time. Would CrossFit exist without kayaking? <laughs> or, <laughs> would CrossFit yeah. e but you could say, would CrossFit exist without Olympic lifting? Right. No, it wouldn't. So, I mean, does that devalue mm. CrossFit that they use a move from Olympic lifting? No. It doesn't right. gymnastics? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Handstand walking. You do you think CrossFit invented handstand walking? No. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's it it's it's a it's a fitness methodology. And here's the big difference. And you said it CrossFit is a fitness methodology. Hyrox is a race. Yeah. It's two different things. It it doesn't even compare. Like it's 
I, I don't even understand where the issue is. What if I was a CrossFit guy and I am a CrossFit fan, why would I hate on high rocks? Cause that's just another race that maybe I want to do sometime. Right. That I can put my skills and fitness. I learned in CrossFit training to use doing a high rocks race. I, I don't get the conflict. It doesn't make any sense. It just is, it, it's the cult. <laughs> well, yeah, and I just, I was so, I was so floored by the people that were calling in and yeah. Um, yeah, just the things that they were saying that were very much a part of the, um, the CrossFit cult. And again, I like, I love CrossFit too. And I like, I mean, I, I have friends who go to CrossFit gyms and it's nothing to do with CrossFit, but it's like some people just kind of get in this little bubble of um, like CrossFit as a, like a sport and an entity of its own when mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's the, uh, the way I train is very much CrossFit like, yeah. and I do workouts that you would do in a CrossFit gym, but I don't say I do CrossFit, but you, it's, it's a type of training your coach is based in CrossFit. Right. And <laughs> a lot of the workouts would have probably happened in a CrossFit gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... I mean, it's anyway, you, you, but again, this goes back to what we say a lot of times. You do not need race monogamy. You can do it all. You can go all over. You don't have to pick. You can do CrossFit yeah. and still enjoy doing a high rocks, a deck or whatever. As far as the question is, would high rocks, high rocks exist without, uh, CrossFit, of course it would freaking exist. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a different name. Maybe it's a little bit different. Who knows? Because, you know, butterfly effect and whatnot. But yeah. do you think, like, I'll tell you straight out, when before High Rocks and DECA, and I was doing circuit training in gym, and I was I had ideas in my mind, of, oh, this would be cool to set up an in-gym race and go gym to gym to gym and set this up, blah, 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 and have the same thing. All this. That was in my mind, which means it was probably in 9 million other people's minds. And yeah. someone would have come up and done it. So yeah, it would still exist. Yeah, absolutely. And and I mean, quite frankly, um, Mintra, who designed the High Rocks workout, essentially, her roots are not in CrossFit. You know, and so yeah, um, I don't know, I don't know. Just everybody get along, have some fun, work out, do some races. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, all right. I think that's that's about all I got. That's a lot of stuff, actually. Mm -hmm. You ready for the holidays? I'm in full. I'm in full mode. I don't even have a race shirt on. I have a motorcycle shirt on today. <laughs> I'm I'm completely in off season mode. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in very much loungewear. Um, yeah. Not even workout clothes. But <laughs> no, ready for the holidays. Um. I really like January. I'm a gym owner and December is a really <laughs> hard month. <laughs> December is just so hard. If anyone um, owns a gym and, or their uh, livelihood comes from that, you ride these really big waves and December and right now is just everyone's very unmotivated <laughs> to work out. Everyone, I mean, off season is great and people need that and stuff, but um we're just it's december is a hard month so that's all i really like january <laughs> but on the upside you did get enough people to volunteer to do three thousand burpees i did and it was yeah it was a really good community um building thing so i did and that they showed up on a sunday morning although many of them were complaining about their hangovers from their christmas parties <laughs> the, night, the night before but they showed up so mm -hmm. nothing cures that good sweat cures a hangover uh-huh yeah i I, when I used to play I hockey know. i used to play hockey we go go out the night before and we played sunday morning hockey at 8 30 oh boy and and you know Burpees are a great exercise if you feel like vomiting. I don't know that I agree with that. Did you hear that? Oh. I was being sarcastic. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. So for those I of you who didn't listen, because Rye doesn't have a microphone, which we should get her one. Um, she says burpees are a great exercise if you feel like vomiting, which apparently was sarcasm now. 
Yeah, they're not. They would probably not be if you felt like vomiting. But no, no. You know, we were tempted to do the Rams. What Rams for ours? And then we went away from it for some reason. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, we were tempted to use the Rams to do Ram burpees for it, but we we didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I backed out for some reason. But when we timed it, you know, the time wise really isn't much different. No. 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 But. Mm-hmm. No. All right. I think it's time to go. Oh, we will not be having an episode next week. Um, I may put up some other stuff, but this uh, like a, a, an older interview that I've done that I've been trying to get out and haven't had a chance to yet. So we might put that up. Uh, who knows if something cool happens, maybe we'll jump on Instagram live, but don't count on it So because mm-hmm. <laughs> we're yeah. going on vacay. We'll take a little break. Yeah, we'll take a little break because you know what? It's the off season and we want to. Mm-hmm. So Beth, let's call her a day. Yeah, thanks so much, everyone, for listening. And we hope all of you have a great holiday season and relax and enjoy some times with friends and family. And we will take next week off, but we will be right back at it after that. Cheers.